Hello! Hi everybody! I'm back again in my Stitch costume, ready to go. Today we are doing one of my favorite, favorite movies ever, Lilo and Stitch. We are only going to be doing one character today because now with this awesome new like live video that we're going to be doing, we're going to be having time to do one character, but it also gives us more time to like really get down with those details, you know? Just take some more time to just really focus in on special parts of our character that we're doing. So we are doing Stitch today, but every single Wednesday we are going to be doing this class. So make sure if while you're watching this video, you think of like an incredible character that inspires you whenever you see that movie, post a comment, send us an email, and give us your suggestions because, you know, there's so many movies out there that maybe I haven't seen that you have that other people would definitely appreciate learning how to draw, you know? So let's get down with materials, okay? So this class is so easy to do here at home because I know all of you guys are kind of bored at home. Very few amount of materials. Get some regular old printer paper. You don't have to get the fancy stuff right now. When you're sketching, use what you got. Use a napkin if that's what all you have. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it though. Fabric's tricky to draw on. But, so yes, paper. You're gonna need paper. You're gonna need colored pencils. I'm using regular old Crayola pencils, but if you wanna get down with those fancy colored pencils, I suggest getting those too, because those are easier to blend usually. I have a pencil, which I always suggest starting to sketch with. Makes a rate, like making mistakes so much easier. You know, you know what an eraser is. I don't need to explain that to you, which is our next material that we're going to be using. And then finally, if you are so, so proud of what you just drew, you can get a very inky pen, okay? I personally use Micron pens. They're super inky and they won't like kind of spread if you kind of rub your hand over it. They're very quick drying and they're really great for doing cartoons, which most of these classes are going to be, okay? To get that really nice clean line after you finish your sketching. So we're gonna get down to it and we're gonna start drawing, okay? Clear off your space, make sure everything is out of your way. I know you're not gonna be flailing around while you're drawing, but you know, you wanna have some space. You wanna have breathable, fresh area. Maybe you can be in a sunny spot in your house. Maybe even go outside, you know? Take a step away from your TV and get some fresh air because you know, we all need it right now. So let's get down to it. So here we have our character stitch today. And, you know, with this class, don't feel like you have to make it perfectly the same exact way that the movie has drawn that character, you know? Make it your own, change up his colors, do your own thing, you know? Just enjoy yourself, have fun. So, what we are going to be doing, I realize now I missed a little part of <laughs> coloring in his ear, but that's okay, That's we can leave that to the end. So I have a few different colors here, but we're going to be working with colors at the end of our class, okay? So making sure all of your little eraser marks are out of the way, and we are going to get started. Get that sharpened pencil out, get that eraser that should be full. You, we're going to be doing some erasing today. Scooch close to the table, and let's get started, okay? So I'm going to roll up my sleeves. And so what we're going to be doing, it's up to you. If you feel inspired and want to draw Stitch and maybe some of his other buddies, I suggest making your page horizontal. Or you can do it like this and make it just a pure portrait of Stitch because then you can have the whole space. That's what I'm going to be doing today because that's the only character we're going to be practicing. But... So since I am doing only one character, I'm gonna start up here at the top of my page. And all of these classes that I have been doing, I have been really suggesting finding a really good base point to start off of. 
and that is called a focal point. So we are going to find our focal point today, and I usually suggest finding a nice round area, okay? Find a round spot that you can start with. So usually I'm going to start with my circle head, okay? Find the shapes within your character and really work around those shapes, okay? So I am going to have my reference photo right here, my example, and then my paper right next to it. And really helps to be able to have them close by so you can look back and forth. So just starting with the head here, I am going to be making a very light circle at the top of my page. And see, I'm going over my lines a little bit until I find the exact circle shape that I want. Because don't worry if you make a bunch of lines, we're going to be erasing anyways. So now that I have a basic outline of where I want my head to be, I'm going to start with one part of the head. So I'm starting towards the top and I'm going to work our way down to the bottom of the toes. So I'm starting up here with this over the brow line here. Okay, so seeing where the ear is kind of towards here on the left, I'm going to be just making a small line curving over and that's where his eyebrow is going to go and i see that this little eyebrow wrinkle kind of goes down a little bit so going through my circle i'm going to just be going down just a little bit just like that and now i'm going to be working my way to the right now and i'm going to be following my line and seeing that he has a little bit of fluffy hair on the top so i'm going to go do some up and down movements some are short, some are long, but I'm really just kind of going for it with this fluff. No need to make it perfect. So some fluff on the top of his hair. Okay, and so now I'm gonna be going to the side a little bit. And then just like on our other eyebrow, his eye, this line kind of comes down once again and starts curving down. And I want you to notice on our stitch, he is not fully facing us. He's not straight on. His nose is pointed slightly to the side. So that's how you can tell that one of your eyes and half of that face is going to be slightly smaller than the other half because we're really looking at it from an angle where part of the head is kind of scooched back, okay? So knowing that, we are going to move that line down. And I, in this one, I made his chin a little bit further down than how it's drawn. So I'm gonna just scooch that line up a little bit and I'm gonna start curving my line to connect back there with the original line that I just made. And don't, if you plan on using your pen when you're done, don't feel the need to make your lines perfect. It's just a sketch, you know? So I'm coming up once again and I am leaving space where I was going, where I'm, where the ear is going to be placed, okay? See, I'm leaving a little bit of space in between my darker line and my original circle. So there we have it, a little bit of an oval with a space in between where our little ear is gonna go. So on this bottom line here, I'm gonna have my ear starting to curve up, okay? You know, I'm looking at stitching, he does kind of look a little bit koala-y. He's like a, a mixture of a bunch of different creatures. I'd love to see the inspiration of the animals that they used to make this guy because he is so cute and cuddly. Okay, so we've got our curve going up and he has a few notches in his ears that look like they're a little bit cut out. So within this curve, we are going to make a little V-shape. And I suggest curving it out a little bit. He's a very round curve. Uh, I, he's a very round character, even with his teeth. You can see that they really rounded them out to make him look a little bit more innocent and friendly, a little bit more cuddly than a sharp tooth kind of creature, you know? So I'm bringing that ear up a little bit further and then doing a slightly curved line back down. So I'm curving it all the way back down and then going a little bit out down here on the bottom. Kind of like an S shape, very, very like straight S. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got our first ear. And then, so we are going to imagine a line going all the way across and that's how you can see where your next ear is gonna go. So I'm gonna do an invisible line going across 
And then I'm going to be going right, like about an inch underneath our little eyebrow line that we made. And I'm going to have that line coming once again up, starting with that inner line here, curving around and bringing it all the way down because this other notch is further down on the ear than the other one. So I made mine a little bit skinny. I'm going to widen mine a little bit and bring it in with that V-shaped little cut in his ear. Maybe he was in a space battle or something. Because Stitch's other name is Agent, uh, wait, Experiment 626. So he's not a naturally created creature. I think they, he's some type of science experiment that happened. You guys should definitely check out this movie. It's so, so cute. Okay, so now I have the basic shape for my stitch. And now I can start adding in the features within the face. So let's see here. Actually, I realized there's a few marks that we didn't do on the ear yet. So there's these folds in his ear right here that we are going to add in. So that's really just a small line finding the middle of my ear and coming down to the other corner diagonally. Diagonally? I think that's a word, right? All right. So then now going back down, finding this corner of our V and then kind of connecting it in middle-ish right there. And that's going to be our first fold of the ear. And then on the other ear, kind of doing the same thing, finding the middle and going all the way down to that corner. And then the same thing on the other side, going a little bit up into the middle and connecting it there. Kind of looks like a lowercase y within the ears. All right, cute. Let's keep going. So I suggest finding a good middle spot. Usually starting with the nose and then working your way out is usually a great way of doing it. Some people like starting with the eyes and working their way down. I think we're going to start with our nose today because I made the mistake of making my mouth too high. But if I have something to base off of, base the rest of the lines off of, I'll be able to fix that. So I'm going to go down the middle. I'm going to make a little line going down the middle of my head. And I'm going to be going off a little bit to the side. Actually, we're going to bring that line a little bit more to the side. Because like I was saying, he's not looking straight at us. So we're going to curve our line slightly. And that line shows where his middle of his head is. Where his nose is. Where the middle of his lips are going to be. So now that we have that line, I'm going to go... I, I guess I'd say a little, a tiny bit further down the, the like the middle of this line here. So like right here, I'm going to make a U shape. He's got a very large nose. So keep that in mind because you want, you want to make sure that it's going to be able to go over your eyes a little bit. So I'm making a very wide U shape like this and then curving it to connect to the other side, just like this. There we go. Nice curvy nose, kind of like a pig. Half koala, half pig. I don't even know. Half rabbit. Write in the comments, what kind of animal do you think Stitch is a mixture of? Because I personally have no idea. All right, so within that nose, I am making two half circles on the bottom for the nostrils, just like that, leaving some space in the middle. And now that we have our nose, we can start working. I'm going to start with our eyes now, but if you want to go down to the mouth, that's up to you. But step by step, we're going to work our way up just a little bit. So for the eyes, I'm going to find right above the nose here, I'm going to be making our eye shape, very similar shape to our nose. So I'm going to start with the top lid and it's going to come up, down, very high arched eyes. So it's going to be a very high little corner here and then curving it around. No point there at the end. We're just curving it around like a circle and then connecting it here with our first corner, a little tear duct, just like that. And then, so with this eye, 
once again, we know that 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 this eye is going to be a little bit bigger because we're facing this side a little bit more. So I'm going to be making a line going across right underneath that original eye so I can see where that would be on the other side. Don't worry about making lines too. Once again, we are going to be erasing. So, But I'm holding my pencil towards the back of my, I'm holding it very far to the back and that really gives some weight off of the tip. I'm really only lightly making that line, okay? Don't feel like you have to push so hard. The pencil will do the work for you. Okay, so getting back down with it. We're going to be coming a little bit farther away from the nose, not connecting it as close. And we are going to be once again, curving our eye up. A little bit wider than our other eye. And then going around town <laughs> and connecting it back to our tear duct here, just like that. Okay, I'm actually going to, I see, sometimes you see once you've actually drawn it, huh, that's a little bit small. So all I do is I'm not even going to erase yet because I'm not super sure of my line. And I'm going to go up a little bit further, make my eye a little bit wider and just erase that original line if I like where I put that new one. All right, so now that we have eye shapes, he really doesn't have any irises. It looks like his whole eye is a pupil. So we are not going to add any inner circles today for those, for that color. It's a fully black eye. So within these eyes, I'm going to do two white, I guess white, it's all white. We're not using color yet. Two just circles within our eyes, just like this, towards the top. Just like that. So towards the top of my eye, two little circles. And right now, he doesn't have any expression on his face, right? We don't have any eyebrows to give us any expression, no smile. So our stitch is going to be super happy today. He's going to be welcoming us, okay? So we are going to be adding in some eyebrows, okay? So right underneath these eyebrow lines that we made, we're going to be making the very curved, following our lines above, a curved eyebrow. Going here, right across. We can't see this other eyebrow because it is curved away from us. And then just coming off from the side, another curved line here for the eyebrow. And it looks like our stitch has a very scrunched nose. So we're going to make two curved lines right above our nose here. One, the bottom one, a little bit longer than the top. Just like that. Because usually when you smile, you get a little crinkle in your nose. And I think that's such a cute way that they drew it. All right. So you can see our stitch has these rings around his eyes with a lighter shade of blue. But since I know that I'm going to be using color later on, I'm not going to be doing that. Because then that kind of gives it more of a smoother transition to those darker colors that he also have, has on his body. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. No rings around the eyes yet. So now for the mouth, we are going to go just a little bit under that nose and we are going to be making a curved line. Imagine making like an upside down smile, but not curved like barely at all. We're barely curving this line like this and he looks sad, right? But we can make that smile by just curving up the corners here. See, we're just doing a small little curve towards the edge. I'm actually going to make his smile a little bit bigger. I want a happy stitch. There we go. Maybe he just ate a snow cone or something. Okay. We got our top lip down. All we have to do is make our bottom lip for the mouth because our stitch is going to have an open smile today. So I am starting a little bit further away from my line. I'm not going to be making a corner here. I'm starting it a little bit further in. And let me straighten my paper out for you guys. I'm going to be coming down. And I'm going about, uh, I'm terrible at me measurements, but just a, the smallest amount away from the, from the chin, okay? And I'm keeping it kind of flat here at the bottom and then curving it back up to almost the corner here. And that should be enough space for the teeth 
and the tongue to be able to fit inside. So just to finish off these edges here, we're going to be doing two small lines on the edges of the mouth to show where his cheeks go, just like that. And now we're going to do his cute teeth. They're so adorable. So to make him look a little bit less harsh, they've given him some round triangle shaped teeth. Okay. So make sure not to make them too pointy or he'll look a little bit more harsh than he actually is. He's a friendly dude. So I'm going to start over here on the left and I'm going to make some round triangles for teeth. One and one. And these are going to be our larger size teeth. And then match those teeth on the bottom, leaving a little bit of space in between with the same size triangles, just like this. And if I'm going too fast, don't worry. This is a recorded video. So if you want to wait till the end so you can kind of rewind if I'm going too fast, don't worry about it. Come join us after our show, okay? So you can do some rewinding. I'm going to add two little teeth in between. So the same shape, but a little bit smaller. So two little triangles in between. You know, Stitch's teeth are different, a little bit different in the movie, but we're just doing a little bit of a simplified version of our stitch, okay? So you can leave it like that, or you can get a little bit more detailed and add the tongue on the inside. So if you guys can see, I'm adding one curve going behind the teeth. And then halfway through that curve, I'm coming back around and down. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to just bring it a little bit closer so you can see my tongue shape behind the teeth. All right. So now that I've got all of our face features, we can move down to the body. All right. Just making sure I didn't forget anything. All right. We're good. So now I suggest for the body, you're like, what the heck? I can't do this. There's so many shapes, so many different lines. Where do I even start? So I always suggest kind of working your way in the middle and going outward. So like if you're going for like, a, if you're drawing like an actual human figure, you want to go for like drawing the torso and the hips and then working your way out and making your arms around it. So I'm going to start here with my tummy shape, okay? So this is going to be our light blue tummy. I'm going to be finding this left bottom tooth here, going a little bit further down underneath the head. And I'm going to be starting in and curving my way out. And he's got a very short body, so we're going to be keeping it short here. Curving it around. I'm going very light. See how light I'm using my pencil? I'm really not putting a lot of pressure on it. Just in case I make any mistakes or I'm not super sure about my lines, I can go back and erase it. Don't, don't feel like don't feel like you have to push so hard. I always tell all my students that don't push so hard. It'll really just do it for you. You just gotta trust your hands, trust the pencil that you'll you'll do a good job no matter what. So see, I'm curving around. I'm making kind of a wiggly shape on the side here, going in and out and around. And so there we have it. We have our little inner tummy shape. And so now we can base the rest of our picture off of. We have got the kind of immediate shape here. So you want to erase some of those extra lines if you have any. And now I'm going to be going out for the arms. I'm going to start here on the left and I'm going to be going about an inch away from our little tummy line. And I'm going to be starting out on the arm. Okay. So you see our arm is curved in and out. We are going to start by doing that. So finding the corner of the mouth, going down a little bit under the head. And I'm going to be curving in and around these very rounded, chunky arms, too. So you want to make sure that you're really curving out there and keeping them short. So a curved line going out. And then I'm not going to go down to the hand. I'm going to make sure that my shapes are right. And on the other side, I'm following those lines, too. So I am skipping over the hand and once again making a curved line going out and in just a little bit and I'm stopping there because you see 
there's a little kind of, there's like a, another line coming out once again to show this, that his, I don't know, maybe like his arm fat is kind of like covering a little bit of his chest. It's lines like this that makes your stitch look a little bit more detailed. So I'm leaving that line there, going a little bit further down on the arm, and then making a little another curved line just like that. See, I made like a little Y shape to show his armpit fat. <laughs> okay, so now for the hands. His hands are so cute. Four fingers, which most cartoons usually have. I don't know why they do that. I'm just always missing that pinky. All right, but we are going to be coming and making a round little mark. I'm making like a little bit of like a parentheses right there, a small parentheses. Let me just come up a little bit so you guys can make sure that you can see that. It's it's like a small little circle without the top or the bottom. And that's what all those fingers are going to be. So I'm going to be curving around and I'm going to be making another small circle. And then kind of layering those fingers on top of each other, just like that. So like a C shape on top of a C shape on top of a C shape. And then just connecting the hand by going in a little bit there. And so now he's got little kitty paws. We got to make him a little bit vicious, right? We got to give him some claws. He's got to protect himself somehow, right? So we are going to be making small ovals for those nails right on the top coming out. Just teeny little ovals, just like that. Little ovals coming out. And so for our other arm here, we're going to have him waving hello today, okay? But if you want to keep it simple, just do the same exact arm on the other side, but make sure your thumb is towards the body. I, When I was first practicing how to draw, I'd always make the thumbs on the wrong side of the hand. So make sure your thumbs are always pointed in towards your body. That always helps. All right, but we're making his hand go up today. So what we are going to do, we're going to go a little bit further up on his head, and we are going to be curving it. And then a little line going out and then a curved line going up. And once again, those round little fingers. So little circles for those fingers, only four. Ooh, I made that one a little bit too big. Okay, so we got those circles and those ovals on top. My lines aren't perfect. You see, that's I'm going in with my pen later on. You erase all those extra lines at the end. Or as you go, up to you. All right. So I'm making my pinky go a little bit further in because that's where our wrist is going to be in right here. And then I'm going to be curving out. Not too fast, but like that for our forearm. Curving. And then just kind of connecting that line with our body. So I'm not going all the way in because that's where the rest of our body is going to start. So erasing just a little bit with a little bit of space here. And I am going to be coming down for the chest. So a little bit further down from the head. I'm not connecting those lines as I bring my line down. I'm following this inner tummy line. So see how I curve in? And I curve out just like that inner line. And I'm just curving it slightly and stopping because I want to do the other side of my body before I work down to the feet, okay? So now with that I'm the other side of the body, I'm going to see where that, that other side of the body lies with the hand. So I'm finding my thumb here. And I'm just doing a slightly curved line going in. You want to make sure those lines end on the same kind of space here. Make sure that they're even because that's where hips usually lie evenly because that's where your legs are going to be going. Okay, so we've got that basic hip shape. And now to finish it off for the legs and feet, we are going to be coming up a little bit on this curved hip line and just another C shape going in and curved not super long. I'm really just making it a very open C. All right. And then going on the other side here, I'm going to make another line in a kind of a shorter C shape because he's turned away. 
So two similar lines on both sides, and those are going to be the beginning of our legs. I'm not going to make these inner feet yet because this little top part, this like underbelly, is going to be a slightly curved line that is on top of the legs. So just a little line like that underneath our belly shape. And then making another line that doesn't connect with our original leg line that goes a little bit further underneath because you see his toes kind of peek out underneath his knee here. So just making three little circles at the bottom, two lines to connect, and there you have your stitch foot. And this other foot over here is gonna look just like that one. So curving it down, not connecting to my knee. Three little circles for the toe claws, bringing it down, two lines in between. All right, and there is your basic shape of stitch, okay? I hope you guys had fun drawing that basic shape because now if you ever want to draw Lilo, a lot of her curves and lines are very similar to stitches. And now to finish up our video here and our tutorial, I'm just gonna give you those basic colors that you're gonna need for stitch, okay? So just erasing my original X shape that I made on his face. I'm gonna be able to show you where those lines are gonna go. Okay, cleaning up my space, making sure all my eraser marks are off. I'm now gonna be taking out the three, whoops, one fell down. It's five colors you are going to need today, okay? Or switch it up, make them purple, up to you. This part is really your choice. Okay, so now I am going to be having a dark blue, a light blue, a red, a brown, and a black. So this would be the point that I would now suggest taking your pen out and tracing those lines that you just made, okay? But I'm going to skip over that because you've already seen the basic lines of how to draw him. Now you'd go in with your pen, outline all those lines, and then kind of just use it as a coloring book now, erasing those original pencil marks too. Always remember to erase your pencil marks. It makes it look, look a lot more clean at the in the end. All right, so his main color is a dark blue, but I'm starting out with those smaller, with those um, less common colors on him. You wanna just get those out of the way first. So I'm actually gonna go in with my black and just fill in those eyes. like so. I usually start with an outline and then work my way in. Doing the same thing on the other side. And so while I'm doing this, I want to make sure if you guys are super proud of your work or if you want to show off anything that you've done today, your stitch, I would love to see your work and I'm sure everyone else would too. So make sure that you post and tag the Ed Asner Family Center if you want your picture to be posted on maybe our web, our account or on our website, okay? I love seeing your guys' version of our characters. So please, please, please post your drawings, okay? So now that I have our eyes, I'm just going to really quickly do the rest of ours markings here. So following the eyebrows, I'm going to be making a small triangle around, a very rounded triangle around our eyes. Doing the same thing on the other side too. And see, I'm stopping behind the nose here, just like how our eye is. Okay, finding the other light blue spots. So I'm also, while I still have the pencil in my hand, I'm gonna do his light blue belly. I'm just using a kind of like a back and forth motion. It really fills up the space a lot faster than kind of doing little spots at a time. I'm very lightly holding my pencil once again. So you don't want super dark blue. If you ever wanted a lighter color, like how we're gonna do now. See, I don't have a pink that came in my Crayola kit, so I'm using a red colored pencil, holding my pencil towards the back 
and very lightly using my red to make that pink kind of hue. So I'm doing that within my ears, not doing the ear folds. So pink for the ears. And pink for the tongue. If you did make a tongue, that part was totally optional. You could just have it be a black on the inside. And then his inner mouth, I used two different colors for his like mouth there. His, I don't know, his throat, <laughs> I guess. I used a red because it's kind of like a burgundy, like a brownish red. So I'm going to be using my red, a little bit darker than how I was doing the tongue and the ears. So I'm using a little bit more pigment. Going in with my brown. And just kind of layering that on top to get kind of a darker, more maroony kind of color. Okay. And so now the only color that we have to use is our dark blue. Because with our dark blue, we're going to be using, you can get so many different shades out of one color. So we're going to be using about three today, three different shades. So we're starting off lightly with a dark blue all over the body. I'm going to be doing this a little bit sloppy because I want to make sure we have enough time so you can see all the colors. So I'm really lightly coloring in with this dark blue. He's kind of like a periwinkle kind of creature. So I think it's easier personally. So the picture is close to me. I am coloring as I turn my page. So I'm turning and I'm coloring, getting all those little spaces around his tummy and his legs, arms, going a little bit slower as I get down into those small features like fingers. All right. I'm going to do the tips of the ears, the ear folds being dark blue. La, 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 la. And then going in for the head, getting those fluffy spots, going around those light blue rings around his eyes. And you can see because I didn't use pen, my pencil is kind of blending into my colors. I really don't like that. I really really like a clean shade of color on mine. So I really suggest using a pen. So I'm not going under the mouth. I realized that we have a little bit more of light blue to do that I forgot about. So I'm leaving underneath the mouth empty because that's where a little bit more light blue is going to be. So I've made the basic shape. My eyes aren't super prominent. So I'm going to be making a little bit of a darker line around, blending that in. Doing the same thing on this eye, really showing off those rings. And now coming back with the light blue under the mouth, which I forgot. My mistake. Okay. And now for the nose, has two different shades of blue. So you're going in a little bit darker with your dark blue here. Pushing a little bit harder than you were before with the body shade. So you get kind of a darker shade of blue and then pushing slightly harder for the darker nostrils and really just easing up tension on the pencil gives you so many different colors that you're going to be able to use within your picture try it i suggest trying at home even doing a picture with only one color and practicing your your pressure on your pencil okay really helps all right, so now that I've got most of that done, finishing the last little spots, accentuating those nails, I am pushing a little bit harder on my pencil to make those dark, dark blue nails. All right, one, two, three, four. And there you have it. Our stitch. He is so cute. As you can see right here, post your finished art so we can see it and so everyone can see it not just me be proud of your work show it off also support your other artists if you have artist friends have post their art show off your friends art show off your art this is a time where you should be creative being just active with your hands being outside using all the colors that you have in your house just go for it okay 
So that's going to be it for today's show. I hope you guys had fun drawing. Every single Wednesday, we're going to be doing live shows like this that you can also rewind and maybe watch again if you, I was going a little bit too fast for you this time. But please, please, please send me your suggestions. I, I would love to hear the shows that you guys want to recreate and try and mimic on our own, maybe make our own version of it. But for now, I think next week, uh, we are going to be doing my favorite game right now. Hopefully, you guys are playing it too. Animal Crossing! So join us next week, and we're going to be drawing some of the cutest characters from Animal Crossing. Kind of look it up now if you don't know what it is. It is such a fun game. But yes, there you have it. That's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and please post your stitches. We all want to see them. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you next week. Ha, 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 ha.